everyone, my name is Quincy Davis and welcome back to another Q-Tip of the Week. Uh, I guess that's more for the subscribers. If you're not subscribed, hopefully you like the video and you'll press the like button and you'll subscribe because I will be putting out more videos to come that hopefully will be helpful for everything to do with the drums and specifically jazz drumming. So uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Now having a good jazz feel can be elusive um, and even though, even if we transcribe somebody with a great jazz feel, someone like Art Taylor or Jimmy Cobb or Tony Williams, um, we might be able to write the notes on paper, but a jazz feel is something that we can't really quantify. And even if we play the exact same notes, there's so much wiggle room with how we address each beat that we may not still be getting the same feel as whoever we're transcribing. So I, hopefully these seven um, kind of tips will help you improve your jazz feel overall. Okay, so let's jump right in. So the first way that I think you can improve your jazz feel is, and it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's so important that you play with conviction and urgency, okay? Um, this is kind of piggybacking off of a previous video I made called mean what you play play what you mean right so it's the same kind of thing you have to play with intent and conviction in order for people to feel what you're doing if you're just going through the motions and you're playing the correct notes but you're not really meaning it and you're not playing from the heart you're not gonna really establish a strong feel okay so make sure you play with more conviction and urgency and I think people if, if you have that mindset, people listening are going to feel what you're doing because um, you're going to believe and you're going to be more invested in what you're doing and you're playing more from here rather than from here. Hey, I just want to let you know that I'm offering Zoom lessons all summer. So if you want more personalized feedback on your playing, go ahead and click the link above and you'll see a bunch of options for um, as many lessons as you're interested in. Uh, and keep in mind the more lessons you sign up for the cheaper each lesson is also I'm offering a chance for you to send me a video of something you're working on either in the practice room or a recent performance and I will send you a video back with personalized feedback of ways I feel you can improve uh, what you're already doing so take advantage of that click the link above and I hope to meet you thanks Okay, so this next way to improve your jazz feel can be coupled with the first point that I made. And this point is just to add more weight to your quarter note. This is especially relevant to medium to slow tempos. I'm gonna demonstrate what I'm talking about. So, so a good exercise is to just play quarter notes. Just play quarter notes and make sure you're using your wrists, not your fingers, your wrists. And you're gonna feel your quarter note much stronger. Check it out. And if you notice, I'm really lifting my stick. You can check out a, a, a pretty old video that I did about lifting. And that's a very important thing to be doing on the ride cymbal and using your wrists, okay? Now we're gonna add the skip beat, but we're gonna try to maintain or re, uh, retain uh, the weight of quarter note, okay? Let's see what happens. So as you can see, you can really feel the quarter note. The quarter note is king, especially again, the medium to slow tempos. That's what people are dancing to. Um, now, this next point, this next way of improving your, your jazz feel is coupled with what I just did. And I was demonstrating it already, but I'm gonna demonstrate it again. Notice how strong um, and with how much uh, conviction and intent I'm playing the hi-hats on two and four that's where our pocket is that's the backbone of the time okay so listen to the effect of two and four and how strong I'm playing it for that feel 
First, I'll demonstrate it at a slower tempo, then a faster tempo. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, here's up tempo. By the way, at, and on that tempo, you notice I'm you can probably hear me feathering very lightly. Now, for those of you who that that this presents some issues and this is difficult, don't do it. I would just say don't do it. Um, if you're really trying to be a, 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 a traditional and an authentic uh, jazz drummer and you're trying to do it right, then you need to work on that. You need to get that together and have the control to play it at different di dynamics. But if you're just trying to get in the door um, and you're just trying to have a decent feel and maybe you're not even playing many jazz gigs, don't worry about feathering. Also, if you're playing a big bass drum, I would I would recommend not feathering, okay? It's hard to control the volume. Um, anyway, so that's just a little tidbit about feathering. Okay, here's an up-tempo example of how two and four really imparts a great backbeat or a, a great um, pocket to the time. Here we go. And you'll notice I'm really using my toes. I'm getting up on my tippy toes so I can put some, some weight of my leg behind two and four without having to lean. If I keep my heel down, it's not a bad technique, but I just find I can't get as much sound with my heel down. So this way I can get a lot more sound and I can create more of a pocket, stronger pocket on two and four if I use my toes. Okay, this is an important one, especially again, medium to slow tempos. Those tempos are, are trickier because you have more space in between the beats uh, to place your up beats. Your up beats will determine how much or how little uh, the, the music is really swinging, okay? So often, if you're not careful, um, I hear many drummers who rush those up beats. If you rush those up beats, it's not gonna swing, guaranteed. So I'm gonna demonstrate how you can really uh, work on your left hand placement of your up beats, your up beats to, to enhance your feel. Here we go. This quarter note. This quarter note. And then up beat. And you'll notice, um, hopefully you'll notice, that it creates a shuffle. There's a, a constant shuffle feel that's created. Um, da -do, da -do, da -do, da -do, if you combine all the components. Pretty cool, right? If you go, if you rush your left hand, it's going to sound like, da -do, da -do, da -do, da -do. then it starts to sound oompa, oompa, oompa. So be very careful with your left hand. That's a good exercise. And then, of course, adding the skip beat. And it, at, that would be the next step for you. Okay, the fifth way that you can improve your jazz feel is to play less and mean more. 
Nuff said. All right, so the sixth way that you can improve your jazz feel is to play more actual, actual jazz language, right? So there's a lot of rhythms that you can play, but not all rhythms are jazz rhythms and not all rhythms actually swing, okay? So I'll just give you a, a good example of something of a jazz rhythm that really enhances the feel of my, uh, my swing. All right, so, um, you know, there's a lot of rhythms that I was playing. Um, one main rhythm was the Charleston uh, rhythm, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, but displaced and placed starting on the two, and of two, right? Something that Art Blakey might play a lot, or, um, or Jimmy Cobb might have played, or um, Art Taylor played a lot. All right, so... Um, and then I played some other rhythms. But the point is that all the rhythms that I played, I tried to make sure that they were real jazz rhythms that helped to propel the groove that I was trying to create and establish and keep in the ride cymbal. Now, if you get too busy in the, in the snare drum, uh, it's gonna take away from that beautiful jazz feel that you've been working on so hard, right? So play more actual jazz rhythm that enhances the swing instead of detracts from the swing. All right, the seventh and probably the most important way you can enhance and improve your jazz feel is to listen and study. I know you've heard it a thousand times. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a thousand and one. You have to listen and study the music and all the greats who played it. That's really the only way um, you're going to start to absorb, you know, what jazz is supposed to feel and sound like. OK, um, that's that's the best way. There's no shortcut to do it. So listen to the records. And I would say be careful not to kind of spread your listening too thin. If you focus on, you know, four or five albums a month that you really get into, um, you're going to get so much more out of that rather than listen to 100 albums in one month that you get just very little bit out of. So I would say follow the model of less is more as far as listening, okay? And and all those all that jazz language and the feel and the sound, it's just gonna start to seep into your, your, your ears. You're gonna hear it. When you hear it, you play it. All right, well, that's the lesson. And hopefully these Q-tips uh, will be helpful for you to improve your overall jazz feel. So until the next time, I will see you. And as always, please keep swinging. Take care. Bye-bye.